Hi everybody, Johan Swart again, author of the book The Burbul, in which I looked at the history and the origins of the breed and also I'm the guy who's bringing out the video series on Mythbusters, uh, looking at the myths and the assumptions that were made about the origins of the Burbul breed. Not all of them are true, uh, but some of them a little bit difficult to prove. Right, I want to go back to the book of Mr. Bert Grabe, the Burbule van South Africa, in which a lot of assumptions were made, which were just taken up from his book into the next book, into the next book, into the next book, and, and never really questioned. Now, in the previous video, I addressed two other myths, uh, the Jan van Riebeek dog, the Bullenbeiter, right, and the name Burbule, where does it come from? And both of these are basically assumed in this book that they... They, they, they were given by the SABT, the name, and that the dog originated from the Bill and Beta dog, which was brought here by Jan van Riebeek. And both these myths were busted. They were not true or hugely unlikely. Okay, now let's get to the third uh, myth that we want to address. And this is in the fifth paragraph of Mr. Graber's book, where he talks about the arrival of the British settlers in South Africa in 1820, and where he makes the statement that they brought with them a bulldog a, and a bulldog and a mastiff type dog, right? And then he goes on later to the other bull mastiffs, and we'll get to that, that's a myth on its own. Now, what were the 1820 settlers? Now, guys, you must remember in South Africa, the Dutch and the British hated each other with a passion, right? Every time the Dutch would just get things going, the British would come and say, no, now we colonize you, and they arrive with a warship, and they impose the Queen's rule, and then the the Dutch would take their wagons and they would start moving off into the bushes. Right. And they moved so far that they actually reached the point between the Fish and the Kai River where they got into conflict with some of the black tribes. Okay. And uh, at, in 1820, the Cape of Good Hope was a British colony. And in 1820, after the wars in, in, in Europe, Britain experienced a serious unemployment problem. Serious unemployment. So the guys that came to South Africa were coming from huge, huge, huge poverty, right? And they, they not only did they have an unemployment problem, there were uh, many of the 1820 settlers were extremely poor and they were promised land, free land in, in South Africa. But the plan was actually was to settle them between the tribes, the indigenous African tribes, which were coming down towards the Cape, right, and were waging a war against the, the settlers of the Eastern Cape, which were rich British people. So they brought these poor guys and they put them in as a buffer zone between the guys who were already established and these guys coming from the north. So you know, it's a little bit of protection, right? We'll bring these guys. They're good tradesmen. You know, they can do horse, uh, shoe a horse. They can do this. They can do that. And we'll put them there as a buffer zone. It will protect you guys. Shame, right? The British did a couple of things like that in the history of South Africa. And that's why they were not liked in this country at all. So let's say they brought a dog. Okay, now who did the dog come with? Right, if you look at the, the, the groups of settlers that came, there were about 60 groups that came to South Africa. Now, <laughs> interestingly enough, if you read a little bit, you go into, into some of the sites here, it was amazing to see why they, they, they sent these guys here. They wanted to get rid of them in, in Britain. These poor guys, the, they, they, the country suffered a burden of enormous national debt, drastic changes in industry, um, the distress of a famine, uh, disabled and jobless soldiers, the collapse of markets in, created by war, general disillusionment on the part of the war's aftermath, and then the failure of the American cotton crop, which brought unemployment and economic distress. They were in a massive recession, right? And these guys were promised land. They were promised free land in Africa. 
and therefore they left and they got on the ships. First of all, the biggest surprise was when they arrived, the rich guys were given big pieces of land far away from them where there was no trouble and no war. Right? And these poor guys who arrived here were given 100 hectares of bare, unprepared land with no homes on, no irrigation, no implements really, or ploughed lands. That's what they were given. I feel sorry for these guys, but okay. So, they lacked all agricultural experience. Many of the settlers were artisan with, artisans with no interest in rural life. They suffered problems such as drought, rust conditions that affected crops, and a lack of transport. Many of them left the eastern border very quickly in search for better life in towns such as Port Elizabeth, Grahamstown, and East London. So, the border area was not really settled. And what happened to the dogs? Nobody knows. And if the dogs were really imported and really brought in, we still don't know. What I did is I searched Google and I, and I, and I went through all the lists of the parties that arrived. And yes, some of them brought livestock. They brought cattle. They brought some sheep. But mostly they brought implements and they brought the tools of their trades. Right? So, if they arrived, they were there, but does that give, if it was 1820, does that give rise to, for instance, dogs that existed in the Cape around about 1900? And those pictures you guys will see in my book very clearly, that were clearly portables. And the corpse of a dog or a live dog that was taken back by... It was a live dog, a mounted infantry of the 2nd Battalion of the Royal Irish Rifles. When they attacked a farmhouse in 1900, they saw a little dog there and one of the guys took this dog and raised it as his pet. And this dog was called a Burbul and the dog was named Billy Buerta because it was a farm of the Buertas that was burned down uh, with the scorched earth policy that the British followed. And the the body of that dog is still in a museum in the UK and that is DNA that dates back to 1902. So, if that dog really descended from uh, dogs... Oh yeah, but by the way, Billy Bota came from the northern Transvaal, which is a hell of a far from where these 1820 settlers were settled. But let's assume maybe some dogs were brought in. Um, I still do not know how they could have evolved into a breed as recognizable as Billy Buerta and the 1900 pictures in a very short period of time. Moving from down in the Eastern Cape where an English community were living in poverty and in total isolation because their neighbors did not like them at all and spread across a whole country, across a whole continent, subcontinent where they appeared in Namibia and places like that. How did these dogs do it? I think it's highly unlikely, right? The origin of the dogs had to be somewhere else. Somewhere where nobody else looked before. These dogs could have occurred in the Eastern Cape, but they could have occurred in Namibia. They could have occurred in Lesotho. They could have occurred all over the African subcontinent. They had to have an origin. They had to come from somewhere. And those are the questions I asked in the book. The 1820 settler story, to me, highly unlikely. I don't want to call it busted. I just want to call it highly, highly improbable. I thank you for your attention. And as usual, please go to my channel. If you like my channel, if you like this video, please put a like on it. Right? Please subscribe to my channel as well. And if you are interested in my book, you can order it by sending an email to burbulbook at gmail.com and I will reply personally to you. The books are in print at the moment. This current edition is selling out incredibly fast. But maybe you're still lucky. Right? Maybe you can still get you one or you'll have to wait for the next print. I want to dedicate tonight's video to sad, sad news that I heard 
today. And that is that my friend James Brennan, well-known Burbu breeder, and also a guy who liked to know the real story behind the Burbu, and who was never shy for the truth. That James Brennan passed away today, and we will sadly miss him. The Burbu community lost a giant today. Um, and this video is therefore dedicated to James. I thank you all. To burbulbook at gmail.com I will reply personally to you. Right? The books are in print at the moment. This current edition is selling out incredibly fast. But maybe you're still lucky. Right? Maybe you can still get you one or you'll have to wait for the next print. I want to dedicate tonight's video to sad sad news that I heard today and that is that my friend James Brennan well-known Burbu breeder and also a guy who liked to know the real story behind the Burbu and who was never shy for the truth that James Brennan passed away today and we will sadly miss him the Burbu community lost a giant today um, and this video is therefore dedicated to James I thank you all.